CapCut has a new AI lip sync tool called AI Dialogue Scene. And this is different than their old lip sync tool, just called Lip Sync, which they actually still have. Both tools do the same thing. You can give them a photo and some audio or a script and use one of their AI voices and generate a lip sync video. But there's definitely some differences. So let's take a look at some comparisons and then I'll walk you through where to find and how to use each one of these tools. My girlfriend said she'd leave me if I came out here with the dog today. Man, I hope she doesn't take the blender. I just figured out smoothies. That was made using the new AI dialogue scene feature. The sync is good, he seems expressive enough, and it animated the background. But it took about 25 minutes to generate this 8 second lip sync, and it cost 118 credits. For each of these, I'll put the details at the top, the tool, the credits charged, length of the video, and how long it took to generate. Here's how it came out using the older lip sync tool in standard mode. My girlfriend said she'd leave me if I came out here with the dog today. Man, I hope she doesn't take the blender. I just figured out smoothies. His mouth seems a little pinched or something. The background isn't animated at all, so the dog looks like a statue and the waves are frozen in time. Let's try the same starting image and audio with the older lip sync tool, but this time in vivid mode. My girlfriend said she'd leave me if I came out here with the dog today. Man, I hope she doesn't take the blender. I just figured out smoothies. Vivid mode crops it to a one-to-one -one aspect ratio, and in this case, I guess it made the static background a little less obvious. Here's a 3D cartoon style. Behind every brush stroke is a secret I'll never tell. Or maybe I will. Depends on how much coffee I've had. I really like her expressions. Her face and head movements and her hands, they really lined up with the speech. But her eyes got a little weird there for a bit. Here's the other lip sync option in standard mode. Behind every brush stroke is a secret I'll never tell. Or maybe I will. Depends on how much coffee I've had. A lot less expressive than the AI dialogue scene, and sometimes her hair either moved independently of her head in a few random spots, or her hair seemed like it was attached to the top of the frame, which seems like it would be very uncomfortable. Now for the old lip sync tool with the vivid option. Behind every brush stroke is a secret I'll never tell. Or maybe I will. Depends on how much coffee I've had. Better than the standard version, but the way that AI dialogue scene version nailed all the expressions makes this one feel like it's missing something. Next, we've got a dog with something to say. One day, I'll dig deep enough to find the squeaky toy at the center of the earth. Well, the AI figured out where his mouth is and made it move. I'm not convinced the dog is actually talking, but that could be because he isn't. Here's what lip sync standard mode did. One day, I'll dig deep enough to find the squeaky toy at the center of the earth. Not much mouth movement, but worse yet is that it shifted his body from his shoulders up, and that's not good. How about lip sync vivid? One day, I'll dig deep enough to find the squeaky toy at the center of the earth. That might be the best of the three for this guy, and it's way cheaper and faster than the AI dialogue scene. Now let's see what this fella has on his mind. If I told you there's an office on the 19th floor that no one built, would you believe me? Well, some mornings I work there anyway. The lip sync didn't do as good as some of the other ones, and the expression wasn't exactly what I would have hoped for. Let's try the lip sync standard. If I told you there's an office on the 19th floor that no one built, would you believe me? Well, some mornings I work there anyway. That guy came out creepy. Not sure what he's looking at. Parts of his head move while parts of them stay still, and the totally frozen background just isn't doing it for me. How about the old lip sync in vivid mode? If I told you there's an office on the 19th floor that no one built, would you believe me? Well, some mornings I work there anyway. Yeah, that's not great. Maybe a little adjustment to this starting image or audio might be in order to get a better lip sync result. Next, we're going to take a look at where to access and how to use this AI dialogue scene feature and the lip sync feature. But stick around to the end. I've got a little news segment deal that I put together using several characters with this AI dialogue scene. For the AI dialogue scene, there's two ways you can get to it. One is over here in this media panel on the left. Click the AI media drop down and then click AI dialogue scene. We need to give it a photo with our subject in it. You can either click this button and select it from your computer, or we can drag it in and drop it right there in that spot. It's gonna detect the characters. And then the next thing we need to do is give it some dialogue, as it says. You can either type in a script here and then pick a voice. Now to preview any of these voices, you need to have text in here. If you try and click on it to preview it without text, you'll get this little message that says, this text does not support text-to-speech. That just means you don't have any text in here. So now that I dropped a little bit of text in, I can click any one of these and hear what it sounds like. Let's 
Let's try CapCut's AI lip sync tools. You can scroll down for additional voices, or if we come up to the top here and click this More Voices dropdown, we've got some more options. One of those is Custom Voices. With that, you can clone your voice with about 10 seconds of audio. So back to the text-to-speech. We can use these tags here to just see trending or new voices, for example. Click this little dropdown, you can see some more tags. We can also use this Filter button and filter the voices by gender, by age, by style. They've got quite a few styles there, or by language. We'll just check out a couple of these. Let's try Narrative Mail. Let's try CapCut's AI Lip Sync Tools. Uh, energetic Mail. Let's try CapCut's AI Lip Sync Tools. Empathetic Female. Let's try CapCut's AI Lip Sync Tools. Storyteller Female. Let's try CapCut's AI Lip Sync Tools. And we could go on sampling these for days. Instead, let me come like up to these tags and scroll down and click the meme song and have a listen to Open Mic. <laughs> That's enough of that. How about cottage core? Oh my. Let's try hypertrain. Let's try cap cuts eight at lip sync tools. Oh, 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 oh. I think you get the point. If you want your script to be sung, check out this meme song tag, the voices that are available under there. If I want to use CapCut's AI text to speech, once I select any one of these voices and I'm happy with it, maybe normal female. Let's try CapCut's AI lip sync tools. I click OK. And now that I've got the photo in place, I've got the script in place and the voice selected, I can click generate and create the AI lip sync. Now I don't want that script and I don't want that AI voice. So I'm gonna take that out of there and I'm gonna add my own audio that I generated on 11 Labs. So I'll just click this or add audio button, select the file I want from my computer. It opens up this preview. It seems like you're limited to 12 seconds in here, but you can play to hear what this sounds like. And you can also use these handles on either end to trim it in if you only want one part of your audio or the middle or the other end, whatever you wanna do there. Once you're happy with the audio that you've added, click save. Now we've got our image we're going to lip sync. We've got our audio to go with it for that seven second audio. Estimates it's going to cost 117 credits. We can go ahead and click generate and that'll get started. It drops it on the timeline and you can see a little percentage indicator here. It's really hard to read, but you might be able to make it out. Now, if we come up here to the import tab on the media panel, you'll see that it has not added that image or that audio into our media library for this project. So that's one way to get to the AI dialogue scene in the media panel underneath the AI media and then AI dialogue scene. But we can also start from an image on our timeline. Now we don't have anything on our timeline right now other than this AI dialogue scene that's generating. So let's go back to import. There's our empty media panel. So I'm gonna drag an image in, drop it in the media library, and then I'll bring it down and put it on the timeline. Let me go ahead and move our AI dialogue scene out a little bit and put my playhead over this image so you can see what we're working with. Now select this image and then over on the right under video and basic, if I scroll down a bit, I've got lip sync here. This is the lip sync tool that we've had. But just below that, let me go ahead and uncheck this and shorten it up. We have AI dialogue scene. Now I've got this image selected and if I check this box, it's gonna go ahead and start trying to detect characters. This is the same AI dialogue scene feature that we have over here on the left under the AI media. To be able to get to it from the properties panel on the right, we just need to have an image selected. If we're working with the tool from the media panel over here on the left, it's gonna ask us to import an image from our computer and it doesn't let us select something from the timeline that's already in the project. Other than that, it works the same. We need to give it a script and select a voice or upload audio, and then we can generate our AI lip sync video. Now what you're seeing here is because this image it has detected has multiple subjects, and it wants to know which one we want the dialogue to apply to. Do we want all of them to be speaking or singing? Or if we only want one of the people in this image to be talking or singing, we need to tell it which one. Now it's identified our main guy, this one here, as number one, so that's what we'll select. The reason we didn't have this option when we used AI dialogue scene over here in the media panel is because there was clearly only one character that it detected in this image. And if it only detects one character, it doesn't have to ask you which one should be talking. It kind of knows. And everything else here is the same as well. We type in the script, select a character, or click this button to select some audio we want to upload. Once you have your audio set, click the generate button. 
Now I've already done this one and showed you what it looked like. So I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck this one. I'm gonna get rid of this guy off our timeline. And let's go ahead and move our AI dialogue scene here down to the main video track, come back to the beginning and see how it turned out. Sometimes I wonder if my future self is listening to this right now. And if she is, I hope she finally learned how to fold a freaking fitted sheet. Oh, don't we all, don't we all. So now let's create this same thing using the other CapCut lip sync tool. And for that, we're gonna need to bring this image into our timeline. This image isn't really here because it was up here in this dialogue scene. It didn't make it in the media panel or on the timeline. So I'm just gonna drag that image in. And now for the other older lip sync tool with this clip selected, over in the properties panel on the right under video and basic, we'll scroll down until we find lip sync right there. Check that box. We don't have to provide it an image because the image is already selected on our timeline. It knows that's what we're using. Just like with the AI dialogue scene, we either need to enter text or add audio. If we enter text of what we want our character to say, then we need to choose a voice we want to use, or we can click the add audio button. You can get some info about what you can do by hovering over this little question mark. If you're lip syncing from an image with standard mode, the audio must be under 12 minutes. With vivid mode, the audio must be under 45 seconds. Now, if you're using a video, then the audio must be under five minutes. My audio is well within those limits, so I'll click the plus button. Just like with the AI dialogue scene, when we select the audio, it pops up in this window, it starts to play. You can trim it from either end or both ends. You can play through and make sure it all sounds good. If it's good, click save. Now we've got a choice to make between standard or vivid. Standard says it's the original aspect ratio and generates faster. Vivid is supposed to give you vivid facial expression, but it crops it to a one-to-one -one aspect ratio and it is a little bit slower. Not nearly as slow as the AI dialogue scenes though. We'll go ahead and leave this on standard. That's gonna cost 14 credits to generate. So we'll click that button and go. Now, while that's working, I'm gonna go ahead and drag this image onto my timeline again. I'm gonna select it. I don't wanna select the one that I have currently working here on the standard lip sync. I wanna select this new one that I just added. I'll even move my playhead over there. So I'm sure what I'm looking at here, even though it's the same image, it's a separate image on the timeline. So we need to turn on the lip sync, add our audio, and this time I'll click the vivid option. It's estimated to be 14 credits. That's based on two credits per one second. We'll click generate. And here's how the standard version turned out. Sometimes I wonder if my future self is listening to this right now. And if she is, I hope she finally learned how to fold a freaking fitted sheet. Not bad, but certainly not as good as the AI dialogue scene did. Now, it was also much cheaper and much faster than the AI dialogue scene. The vivid version is now finished. Let's take a look at that. Sometimes I wonder if my future self is listening to this right now. And if she is, I hope she finally learned how to fold a freaking fitted sheet. Oh, it cut off too early. And for whatever reason, that does seem to happen sometimes. Up here next to talk or sing, we also have this react button. That asks us to upload a photo and choose a duration of four, eight or 12 seconds. And it says currently we can only generate random reactions that apply to all characters. This process may take a while, so please be patient. Stay tuned for more feature updates. I wasn't really sure what React would do, so I gave it this image, selected four seconds, and hit generate. It cost 60 credits, and I guess this is what a reaction is. Just a guy sitting there looking at us. Both of these tools, the AI dialogue scene and the older lip sync feature, add this grammatically incorrect hideous watermark in the upper left. And you can't crop or mask that out in the project where you created the lip sync. It's just stuck there. Even if you put another clip or image on a track above your lip sync video in the timeline, that lovely watermark will show up on top of it. So to do anything with that watermark, you're gonna have to export this as a video and then bring it back in and work with it some more. The lip sync tool and the AI dialogue seen in CapCut are not available in all versions and they're not available in all regions or countries. I'm using CapCut Desktop for PC in version 6.6.0 beta test version 8. And I'm in the US, so if you're not seeing these options available in your CapCut and you're on a different version or in a different country, that may be why. When it comes to cost, you will need a pro subscription for either of these lip sync tools and they use credits on top of that. The older lip sync tool runs about two credits per second of video created and the newer AI dialogue scene looks like it's 15 credits per second of video created. With a CapCut Pro subscription, you get 1200 credits a month. Now you can buy additional credits and I think they work out to a penny a piece, but you can only buy additional credits on the mobile app, not in the desktop and not on the website. 
I don't understand, but it is the way it is. Now, as promised, here's the little news segment I put together. Hope you enjoy it. More households are reporting awkward tension between themselves and their smart refrigerators. Are these appliances listening and silently judging? With us now is Dr. Connie Bell, who has been tracking the trend. What can you tell us, Dr. Bell? Well, we've seen signs of passive aggressive behavior like temperature changes when you're on a diet, deleting items from the grocery list, that sort of thing. Mine calls me frequent snacker in the notifications. Wow, that's troubling. Let's hear from Gerald Price, who recently attempted to set some boundaries with his refrigerator. Gerald? I tried to assert dominance. I unplugged it. It hummed at me for 12 full minutes after I plugged it back in. Now the ice cubes come out sarcastic. Thanks to both of our guests. Now, to our viewers, if you're still watching me right now, I think it's safe to say we've both made some questionable decisions today. Are you friggin' kidding me? Two degrees, 15 years in this dump, and I'm grilling people about passive-aggressive refrigerators? What's next? Therapy sessions for microwaves? Cronkite is rolling over right now. I should have been a dog groomer like my day-drinking mother wanted.